today we are going to take a look at the interview questions that are related to the C programming language. These are the common questions that are asked in interviews that um, require C programming language as a skill. So let's diverge into it. First question is who is the founder of C language? So its answer is Dennis Ritchie. C language was founded by Dennis Ritchie in AC and C Biz Laboratory. Next question. What is the use of header files in C programming? Okay, so the answer is header files are also known as library files. They contain two things. First is the definition and second is the prototypes of the functions that are being used in a program. Each header file contains a set of functions. They are included using the preprocessor directories in the C programming language that is hash include. For example, stdio.h is a header file that contains definition and prototype of the functions like printf and scanf. So, if you are familiar with coding in C language, then you might know that while coding, if you want to print anything, then you just simply use the printf function and pass some of the arguments like string or the format, uh, formatting output for printing the values of the variables. But, you have no idea that what is this printf function, how many arguments does it take, what is the definition of this printf function? You simply use it and get the output on the screen. So, this definition and usage of the printf function is defined in the header file stdio.h. That is why the very first statement in a C program is hash include stdio.h for the standard input and output. In the same way, Hash include maps.h is a header file that contains the definition of the functions that perform mathematical operations such as power, sine, cos, tan, etc. Next question is, what is the use of printf and scanf functions in C? The answer is, printf function is used to print the message or the values on the output screen. So basically, if you just want to print anything on the output screen, you have to use the printf function. Whether it is a message to the user or any value of the variable on the screen. Scanf function is used to take input from the user. For example, here we have declared a variable a which is of integer type. Then, using the printf function, in double quotes, we have written enter value of A. Now this message will be printed as it is on the output screen. It will prompt the user that, okay, this program wants you to enter the value for a variable called A. Then next is the scanf statement, which will uh, be used to take the input from the user. That is, whatever the user enters as the value of A will be stored in the memory location that is being preserved by the variable A using this scanf statement. Then again is a printf statement that is used to print the value of A. So here we have seen both the usages of printf function. First is to print the message and the second is to print the value of A a variable on the output screen. Here, mod D is a formatting output that is used to tell the compiler that in case of here, the value of A will be inserted. Now here we can see that uh, the user will get a message enter the value of A. Suppose the user enters 10 as a value, then A equals to 10 will be printed. Next question is, which symbol is used as a statement terminator in C? 
So semicolon is that symbol which is used as a statement terminator in C. That means if one statement is written and after its ending we have to use a semicolon otherwise there will be an error as that statement will never be terminated without the use of semicolon. Next question, what are keywords in C? So the answer is keywords already have a predefined meaning to the C component. These words which have a predefined meaning to the C compiler are known as keywords and they should not be used as variables, identifiers or constants in C. So uh, these are the words that already have some meaning with the C compiler. So they cannot be redefined for the C compiler. For example, we have keywords like for. So for is a loop. So we cannot just declare a variable like int for. That will confuse the compiler. Then we have while, main, struct, class, if, int and so on. There are around 32 keywords in C. Next question. How many looping statements are there in C? There are three types of loops in C. For loop, while loop and do while loop. For loop is used when the exact number of iterations are known. Suppose we have to print the name of five students. Then what will we do? We will execute the statement uh, that print the name of student five times. So here we exactly know that we want to execute the statement five times. In this case we will use the for loop. Next is the while loop is used while the given condition is true. So this loop iterates while the given condition, the condition evaluates to true. As soon as the condition evaluates to false, this loop stops its execution. The third is the do while loop. It first executes the statements and then checks the condition. So these are the uh, three types of loops in C. Next, we have what is entry control and exit control loop in C. Entry control loop checks the condition when the control enters the loop. What? Example, while loop. So in while loop, first of all we write the while keyword and then in parentheses we give the condition. So that is kind of an entry condition. That is the entry point for the loop. If the control evaluates the condition and the condition evaluates to true, then only the control enters the body of the while loop. But if the condition evaluates to be false, then that loop body is not executed. So while is an entry control loop. Next we have exit control loop. Exit control loop checks the condition when the control exits the loop body. Example do while loop as we have already discussed in the previous question. Do while loop <coughs> do while loop is used to first execute some block of statements and then it checks that whether the condition is true or not. So the statements are executed and at the time of the exit of the loop body by the control, then at that point of time it is checked that whether the condition is true or false. Next question, what is the difference between a while and do while loop in C? So first we discuss about while loop. It is an entry control loop. We already know that. Statements are not executed if the condition is false. That we also know that if the control evaluates the condition to be false, then it skips the body of the while loop. No semicolon is present at the end of the while. So uh, we write the while keyword and then within parentheses we write the condition. And then uh, the braces are optional, uh, uh, like if there is a single statement in the loop body, then uh, the braces are not required. They are optional, but if there are multiple statements, then braces are required. Now we have the do while loop. It is an exit control loop, that is the condition is being checked when the control. Um, now for the do while loop, it is an exit control loop. The statements are executed once even if the condition that is given to us is false. Statement, hmm, sorry, semicolon at the end of the while, we write do, 
then within braces we write the statements that need to be executed then while we work then within parentheses we write the condition and after that we put a semicolon braces are always required whether it is a single statement body of the loop or a multiple statement body of the loop then the next question is what is the difference between the local variable and global variable in c so first we discuss the local variable the local variables are declared inside a function or a block their scope is limited to the function in which the variable is declared variable created when control enters the function block and destroyed on the exit value can be accessed by statements inside the function block only stored in stack global variables global variables are declared outside of a function or a block scope is within the whole program that is uh, in the program in which the global variables are created so they can be accessed anywhere within that program life of a variable exists until the program is executing the value can be accessed by any statement of the program and the compiler decides the storage location of the global variable <laughs> next statement is state the usage of increment and decrement operator in c so both the increment and decrement operators are the unary operators that is they operate on single value or operand they only need one operand to operate they used to either increase or decrease the value by one so if you are using increment operator it will increase the value by one and if you are using a decrement operator it will decrease the value by one it can be used either in the prefix form or the postfix form here we have taken an example first we have declared a variable a of integer type and assigned 10 as its value the value of a becomes 10 now in another variable b which is again of integer type we have stored that plus a here plus plus is the increment operator and is in the prefix form means it is written before the value on which it acts here the value on which this increment operator acts is a and since it is written before a so it is a prefix increment operator now the value of b will evaluate to be plus plus and 10 which is the value of a so it will be 11 here the value of a will also get updated and it becomes 11 in the next statement int c is another variable and b plus plus here b is the value and plus plus is the increment operator since it is used after the value so it is the postfix increment operator now the value of c will be evaluated to be 11 which is the value of b plus plus how can you use printf statement without a semicolon in c as we know that semicolon is a statement terminator so writing any statement without a semicolon will cause an error so this question that how can you use printf without semicolon is a bit tricky one well the answer is you can just put the printf statement inside the if condition suppose here we write hash include stdio.h which is the header file then int main which is the main function the starting point of any C program after that we write if statement and within the parenthesis we write printf hello world this is valid because printf hello world is going to print hello world on the output screen so if would be executed and since within the body of the if that is in the braces we have not passed anything so no statement will be executed and the printf statement will print hello world on the output screen next question what are basic data types that are supported in C programming language we all know that in C there are different types of data types that are being supported. 
Now let us look at some of the basic data types, their size and their range. So first is short. It occupies 1 byte of size. Now 1 byte is equal to 8 bits of data. This means short will occupy 8 bits of data. And it ranges from minus 128 to 127. Thus we can store signed values into it. That is both the negatives and the positives are possible to be stored in short data type. Similar to short is unsigned short which is having the same size as short but it will only store positive integers from 0 to 255. Next is char that is used to store character values whose size is also 1 byte and range is minus 128 to 127. The difference between short and char is that short is used to store integer values ranging from minus 128 to 127 while on the other hand char will be used to store the character values whose a sky can lie from minus 128 to 127. In the same way unsigned char which is also a 1 byte size will store values from 0 to 255 that is the ASCII values from 0 to 255. Next we have integer which will occupy a size of 2 bytes and its range will be from minus 32,768 to positive 32,767. It will be used to store integer values within this range. Similarly, we have unsigned integer whose size is similar to that of the integer that is 2 bytes. It will also be used to store the integer values but since it is unsigned integer so its range will be from 0 to 65,535. Next we have long. Long is nothing but an extension of integer. Integer is used to store a definite range of values but if we are using a long data type then in that case the range will be extended and we will be able to store large integer values in long. So the size of the long is also double the size of integer that is 4 bytes and its range is minus 2147483648 positive 2147483648 in the same way we have another data type that is unsigned long which is nothing but an unsigned version of long having the same size as 4 bytes and its range is from 0 to 42949672952. The next data type that we have is float that is used to store decimal values in it. Its size is 4 bytes and its range is from 3.4 e minus 38 to 3.4 e plus 38. That means that from 3.4 into 10 to the power minus 38 to 3.4 into 10 to the power positive 38 is what is the range of this float data type. Double in the same way is simply an extension for float. Its size is 8 bytes and its range is 1.7 e minus 308 to 1.7 e plus 308. In the same way we have another data type that is long double whose size is 10 bytes and it is used to store again the decimal values but to even a higher precision than double. Its range is from 3.4 e minus 4932 to 1.1 1 .1 e plus 4932 that is to a very high level of precision. So these are the basic data types that are supported in the C programming language. 
Next question. How can you make an infinite loop in C? So what is an infinite loop? An infinite loop is one that keeps on executing up till the infinite number of possibilities. It never stops its execution. So here we are seeing an example that how can we make a for loop infinite loop in C? So to make a for loop an infinite loop the omission of the condition statement because if there is no condition or if the condition is provided in such a way that it never evaluates to be false and is always true. So the loop will continue till infinite possibilities. So this is what we have done. We have taken a for loop and simply written its syntax without passing any initialization condition, without any condition and without any updation. And inside the body of the for loop, we have written a printf statement in which we have printed infinite loop. So this message, infinite loop, will be printed infinite time on the computer screen. Next question, name the storage classes in C. So there are four storage classes in C. These classes are auto, register, static and extern. Next question, can a C program be compiled or executed in the absence of a main function? So, as we know that main is the starting point of every C program, the program will be compiled if there is no main function, but it will not be executed. To execute any C program, a main function is required as the control will not know from where to start the execution because main is the starting point of every C program. Next question, what is a C token? C tokens are the smallest building block or smallest unit of a C program. The compiler breaks a program into the smallest possible units which is called a token. Keywords, constants, special symbols, operators and identifiers used in a C program are referred to as C tokens. For example, if we take int a equals to 10 and then semicolon. It is a valid C statement. Here int is a keyword which is token number 1. A is an identifier which is a variable name. So it is another token. Equals is the assignment operator which comes under the category of operators. So it's another token. 10 is an integer value which is constant. So it is also a token and semicolon which is kind of a special symbol that is the statement terminator so it is also a token so in this statement there are five C tokens which are the smallest unit and cannot be broken further next question what is the main difference between the compiler and the interpreter the answer is first we look at compiler it is used in C language. It translates the complete code into the machine code in one go. So whatever the source code is fed into the compiler, in one go it translates the whole source code into the machine code. The compilation process is faster. Next, interpreter. Interpreter is used in Java and other high level programming languages. It is designed to compile the code in a line by line fashion. The process is slower than compilation. So both compiler and interpreter are used to compile the source code into the machine code. But the striking difference is that compiler translates whole code into one code. But the interpreter does the same process in a line by line fashion. Next question. Differentiate between getch and getche. The answer is both the functions are designed to read characters from the keyboard. But 
the main difference is for get ph it reads the characters from the keyboard but it does not use any buffers hence the data is not displayed on the screen so whenever the get ph function is being used it reads the character from the keyboard but since no buffer is used so the data will not be displayed on the computer screen next is the get ph function that reads the characters from the keyboard and along with that it uses a buffer to store those characters so the data that is being entered into the get ph function will be displayed on the screen let us understand this with the help of an example here first of all we have declared a character type of variable then there is a print as statement please enter a character so this would be printed as it is on the output screen on the right side you can see the output as well please enter a character will be printed on the screen then there is a get ph statement since the get ph does not uses a buffer so whatever the character would be entered by the user will not be displayed on the screen instead the next print as statement would be executed which is your entered character is and the value of ph will be printed suppose in this case the user enters capital a so the message that would be printed on the output screen is your entered character is capital a next there is another print as statement please enter another character this time get ph is used to accept the input and since uses a memory buffer so the character that is being entered by the user is displayed on the output screen here the user enters capital b and this capital b is printed on the output screen at the time of its entry after this the next print as statement your new character is is executed and the final output on the screen will be your new character is capital b so this is the difference between get ph and get vhe in the c programming language next question is how can we store a negative integer in c so to store a negative integer the two's complement of that number is calculated first and then whatever the value is found it is stored inside the variable for example if we want to store minus 5 then in that case the binary value of minus 5 will be 1 0 1 1 so we need to find the ones complement of 5 the ones complement of 5 will be 1 0 1 0 after that one will be added to the ones complement of 5 giving 1 0 1 1 which is nothing but the binary value of minus 5 Next question what do you mean by dangling pointer variable in C programming so first of all we look that what is a pointer a pointer in C programming is used to point to the memory location of an existing variable if that particular variable is deleted but the pointer is still pointing to the same memory location then that particular pointer variable is known as a dangling pointer variable what is dynamic memory allocation in c so the answer is dynamic memory allocation is the process of allocating memory to the program and its variables during run time it involves three functions for allocating the memory and one function to free the used memory or deallocate it so the three functions that are used to allocate the memory are malloc calloc and realloc
the function that is used to deallocate the used memory is free. All these functions have no parameters. Next question, what do you mean by memory leak? So, memory leak can be defined as a situation where programmer allocates dynamic memory to the program but fails to free or delete the used memory after the completion of the code. This is a harmful process if demons and servers are included in the program. Further, if the memory is being allocated but is not being freed, then it can cause a problem in the memory management. So this is memory leak. Next question, what is the difference between declaring a header file with angular brackets and double quotes? If the header file is declared using the angular brackets, then the compiler searches for the header file within the built-in path. But if the header file is declared using the double quotes, then the compiler will search for the header file in the current working directory first and if it is not found over there, then it searches for the file in the other location. Next question. What is typecasting? Typecasting is a process of conversion of one data type into another. It is a form of explicit conversion. That is, it is done as per the choice and wish of the user. Syntax for typecasting is, within parentheses, you need to mention the target data type, that is, the data type into which you want to convert your expression into and after that you write the expression and end the statement with a semicolon. For example, char ch is initialized with a. So ch is a character variable that is holding the character capital A. int val is another integer variable in which we have casted this character variable. So we have written int val equals within parenthesis int that is our target data type and then we have mentioned ch. So this is explicit conversion using typecasting. Now val will store the ASCII value of capital A which is nothing but 65. Next question. What is the hash pragma directive? It is a preprocessor directive that can be used to turn on or off certain features in a C program. It is of three types, hash pragma startup, hash pragma exit and hash pragma warn. Hash pragma startup allows us to specify functions upon program startup. That is, when the program starts, then what functions will be fired automatically? Hash pragma exit allows us to specify functions called upon the program exit. That is, when the program is about to exit, then what functions do we need to perform? Hash pragma warn tells whether to suppress any warning in the C program or not. Next question is, what is null pointer in C? Null is used to indicate that the pointer doesn't point to a valid location. The pointer should be initialized as null if their value is unknown at the time of declaration or when the memory pointed by the pointer is deallocated within a program. Next question. How will you print numbers from 1 to 100 without using a loop? So we know that if we want to do something in a repeated fashion, we use loop for that purpose. But how can you print numbers from 1 to 100 without using a loop? So one method is that you have to write the printed statement 100 times, but that is just a troublesome process. So we have another process, another method 
through which we can do so and that is known as recursion. Recursion is the repeated calling of a function by itself. So here we have created a function whose return type is void. The name of the function is print numbers and it accepts an integer argument n. Within the body of the function there is an if statement. If n is greater than 0 then it calls itself. It calls print numbers and passes n minus 1 into it. After that calling it will print the value of n. So this print numbers function calls itself and using that it will print the value of n and n will be supplied by the user. So it is a recursive calling of print numbers and using this we can print easily the numbers from 1 to 100 without using any loop. So now we also know that using recursion anything that could be done through loops can be done easily. Next question, what are local static variables and what is their use? A local static variable is a variable whose lifetime doesn't end with a function call where it is declared. It extends for the lifetime of complete program. All calls to the function share the same copy of local static variables. Static variables can be used to count the number of times a function is called. The static variables get the default value as 0. Next question. Why preprocessor directive does not end with a semicolon? So the answer is semicolon is treated by the compiler and as the name suggests the preprocessors are programs that process the source code before compilation even starts. Therefore, the use of semicolon in preprocessors is not needed. Next question. What is the smallest possible executable code in a C programming language? Since the presence of main function is needed for a program to start its execution, so the smallest possible executable code in C, it is mandatory to include a main function. So the code will be void main, parentheses open and close, and braces open and close. That means it will only contain a main function with parentheses but no arguments and no body. So this code will be compiled also, it will be executed also, but it will not do anything. This is the smallest possible executable code in the C programming language. What are static variables? So the variables that are declared using the keyword static are known as the static variables. They have a property of preserving their value even after they are out of their scope. Such variables have their scope restricted to the function in which they are declared. Let us understand the use of the static variables with the help of an example. Here we have taken a function whose name is fun. It takes no arguments and has integer as its return type. In its body, we have declared an integer variable count with the keyword static and have initialized it to 0. So now count will have all the properties of the static variable. In the very next statement, we have incremented this count and then we have returned the value of this count. Now inside the main function, there are two printed statements and both are doing that they are calling this function fun and at the same time they are printing the value of count. So the output is 1, 2. How is it possible? When function fun is called for the first time, this static int count variable is initialized to 0 and its value is incremented. So now count will hold 1 
and this one will be printed using this printf statement here. Now since count is a static variable, so its value is preserved. Now when the function fun is called for the second time, then here the value of count is not again initialized to 0, but its previous value is preserved, that is 1. Now 1 is incremented and now the count variable will hold the value 2. Now this 2 will be printed using this printf statement over here. So the output we get is 1 and 2. Next question. Differentiate between calloc and malloc functions in C. So as we know that both these functions are used to dynamically allocate the memory in C programming language. What is the difference between them? First we will take a look at malloc. Malloc doesn't initialize the allocated memory, thus the memory that is being initialized by malloc holds the garbage values. Malloc takes only one argument and that is the size of the memory block to reserve the memory. Its syntax is void asterisk malloc within parenthesis the size of the memory block. The next is calloc. Calloc initializes the allocated memory block to 0. So the memory that is initialized by calloc will hold the value 0 and not the garbage values now. It takes two arguments. One is the number of the blocks to be allocated and the other is the size of each block. Its syntax is void asterisk calloc the number of the blocks that need to be allocated comma the size of each block. Next question is differentiate between actual parameters and formal parameters. Formal parameter, a variable and its type as they appear in the prototype of the function or method. Actual parameter, the variable or expression corresponding to a formal parameter that appears in the function or method call in the calling environment. Let us understand this with the help of an example. Here we are using recursion to calculate the factorial of a given number. So factorial is the name of our function that accepts one integer argument n and its return type is also integer. This int n is the formal parameter as it is appearing in the prototype of the function factorial. Inside its body we have calculated the factorial which is if n is greater than equals 1 return n into factorial n minus 1 which is nothing but the recursive calling else return 1. Inside the main we have a printf statement in which we are printing the value that has been returned by this factorial function and we are passing a value to it. Here we have passed 5. So this 5 becomes the actual parameter as it is corresponding to the formal parameter n and it appears in the function call. Here we are calling the factorial function and we have passed 5 so it is the actual parameter. Next question, what is the preprocessor directive in C? C preprocessor is just a text substitution tool. It instructs the compiler to do the required preprocessing before the actual compilation can be done. All the preprocessors command begin with a hash symbol. This is the hash symbol, the pound sign. It gets executed before the actual C program is being executed. Example, hash define that substitutes a preprocessor macro and hash include that inserts a particular header from another file. There are other examples of the preprocessor directives also. Next question, what is an array? An array is a data structure that stores multiple elements of the same data type. That is, it stores the homogeneous elements. It reserves the memory in a sequential manner, one after the other. Array data structures are static data structures. 
Thus, the memory size once defined cannot be changed later on in the program. There are three types of arrays, namely one-dimensional array, two-dimensional array and multi-dimensional array. Examples, int a within square brackets we have specified 2. So 2 is the size of array and after the execution of this statement, an array of integer data type a will be created which has a size of 2. Within the square brackets, the dimensions are mentioned. Since there is only a single square bracket, it means it is a one dimensional array. Similarly, in the very next statement, we have mentioned int mat 3 and in the other square brackets, it's again 3. So it is used to declare a two dimensional array. This will declare a two dimensional array like a form of a matrix which will have three rows and three columns. So total of nine elements will be stored in mat. Next question. Which statement is better in terms of efficiency and y? x equals x plus 1 or x plus plus. So x plus plus is efficient than x equals to x plus 1 because it is just a single instruction to the compiler while the other is not. So increment operator is only a single instruction to the compiler which is more efficient. Next question is, what are the limitations of scanf function in C? So the limitations of scanf function are as follows. The scanf function cannot work with a string of characters. It is not possible to enter a multi-word string into a single variable using the scanf function. Suppose you have a variable in which you want to store your name. In that case, it is required that after the first and the last name, a space is needed. But if you are using the scanf function to store your whole name in a single variable, then it is not possible because scanf will just terminate the string as soon as it encounters a space character and it will only store your first name. So to counter this problem, the getf function is used which treats the spaces and tabs as a part of the input string and is terminated only when the enter key is pressed. Next question, write a program to swap two numbers without using the third variable. So here we have declared two integer type of variables a and b. A is initially holding the value of 10 while B is holding the value of 20. After swapping, we need A to hold the value 20 and B to hold the value 10. There is a printf statement that is used to print the current values of A and B which is 10 and 20 respectively. Then there is a statement that states that in A store the sum of A and B. So, the sum of A and B, that is 10 plus 20, which is nothing but 30, will be stored in A after the execution of this statement. The very next statement states that B will hold the difference of A and B. So, A, which is now holding 30, and B, which is still holding 20, will be stored in B, that is 30 minus 20, which gives the value of B as 10 over here. In the next statement, A will store the difference of A minus B, that is, it will store the value of A, which is 30, minus the value of B, which is 10, which gives the value of A as 20. So the current value of A is 20, while that of B is 10. And this will be printed when this printf statement is executed. Now we can see that the values of A and B are swapped and no third variable is used.